Good morning, everybody. It's 9 o'clock, and 9 o'clock is with me, Father Warner. We are at the end of the fifth week in Ordinary. Today is Saturday, and um, our text is taken from Mark chapter 8, verse 1 to 10. And I've entitled today's teaching, Providing for Our Need, Not for Our Greed. So let's read the text together. In those days, when there was a great crowd without anything to eat, he called his disciples and said to them, I have compassion on the crowd because they have been with me now for three days and have nothing to eat. If I send them away hungry to their homes, they will faint on the way. And some of them have come from a great distance. His disciples replied, How can one feed these people with bread here in the desert? He asked them, How many loaves do you have? They said, Seven. Then he ordered the crowd to sit down on the ground and he took the seven loaves and after giving thanks, he broke them and gave them to his disciples to distribute and they were distributed among the crowd. They had also a few small fish and after blessing them, he ordered that these two should be distributed. They ate and were filled and they took up the broken pieces left over, seven baskets full. Now there were about 4,000 people and he said to them, and he sent them away, and immediately got into a boat with his disciples, and he went to the district of Dalmanutha, the Gospel of the Lord. Now, um, Jesus, we know, is in the region of, Decap of the Decapolis. We know this from uh, the previous chapter, chapter 7, verse 31, which tells us that he went to the region of the ten cities. So he is still in Gentile territory and he has already worked two public miracles in Gentile territory, one in Tyre, the other in, in the region of Sidon. One was for a Syrophoenician woman uh, and this woman had a daughter who uh, was possessed and then we know for a deaf man whose friends bring him and beg Jesus to lay his hands on, on, on them. Now, unlike a rolling stone, uh, that gathers no moss. Jesus is moving and he does, uh, uh, he gathers a large number of people and many of these now are Gentile followers. So if you look at your Bible, uh, today we are talking about the feeding of the, of the 4,000. If you look at your Bible, you'll see in chapter 6 in verse 30, he has fed 5,000. And there, he has fed 5,000 in Jewish territory. Now Jesus is in Gentile territory. And all this must have brought a big smile to Mark's Gentile Christians as they read the good news that Jesus has, uh, Jesus too welcomes uh, the Gentiles. For three days, 4,000 disciples, read men in this text, um, 4,000 disciples of Jesus have been following him. They have not eaten any earthly bread, but they have been feeding on Jesus, the bread of life. Now, Jesus is fully aware that while he has nourished them with his word, as he does when we read or when we hear the word, they hungered also for the bread that would nourish their bodies. They are human beings. They wanted something to eat. The words of our compassionate Jesus, really, when you read this text, should and must become the benchmark for the church and for every clergyman, for every Christian, for every member of a Christian community, for every person of goodwill, these words of Jesus must become a benchmark. Because this is what he says, I have compassion for the crowd because they have been with me now for three days and they have nothing to eat. If I send them away hungry to their homes, they will faint on the way. Christ does not want to send the people home hungry for they might faint on the way. Look at the great sensitivity he has. He was aware of the great distance that they had traversed just to be with him, just to hear the master's voice. Their need now was bread and yet they have not uttered a word of protest at the lack of it. They've not said to Jesus, we've been with you for three days, where's the catering service? Yeah, why is it that we've not got anything to eat? You know, uh, quite ironically, um, <laughs> uh, people, whenever we ask, we have a retreat, people are, and we say we are serving meals, they'll ask, veg or non-veg? <laughs> yeah, you're coming for a retreat. 
and it's very true. I, I understand people have dietary preferences, but what is important in the retreat? Yeah, what is important? When um, I did a retreat under the late Father Errol Rosario, and we did a one month retreat, I remember him telling us during the retreat period, can you stop focusing on food? In fact, he said, can you eat as little as possible on one day? I remember him saying this. He says, give that eating time to God. Now, coming to the text again, it's a little amusing, if not amazing, to see the incredulity of the disciples. Here are these thousands of people following Jesus, 4,000 men alone. They are so awestruck by the words of Jesus. They are hungering for the word. And then you have the disciples on the other hand. They have seen the miracle of the feeding of the 5,000. We saw that in chapter 6. He has fed them, fed the people, and there have been 12 baskets left over. They picked 12 baskets of broken pieces of fish and bread. And now, when Jesus says, I do not want to send these people away, they've come such a great distance, they might faint on the way, his disciples respond, how can one feed the people with bread here in the desert? And you, you have to be left amazed. You've got to say, guys, are you kidding? Are you kidding? Just flip your Bible two chapters ahead. I have often reflected on the great pain that Jesus must have endured even with those whom he loved, his own disciples. You see, time and time again, as Jesus has to do with us, he had to explain his mission and yes, his very self to his disciples. They had seen so many miracles, more miracles than one sees the stars, and yet they were left staring by their own lack of faith at a moonless night. But you see, our Lord did not give up on them and he does not give up on us. So what does Jesus do? Jesus always begins, and I like this, Jesus begins from where we are. He begins from where we are. He began with where they were. What do you have to offer? Can you at least tell me what is it that you have to offer? How many loaves do you have? Verse 5, he said. And they say seven. We have seven loaves to give you. How many loaves do you have is a question he asked them. He asks us that same question. What do you have? Don't tell me what you don't have. Tell me what you do have. Let me work the miracle with what you have. Yeah? Uh, I don't have money to uh, give father to build a new church. I don't have money for this. I don't have this. What do you have? Yeah? Nobody is asking you to give lakhs. But hey, of 1,000 rupees, can you give 100 rupees? You can start somewhere. So Jesus worked the miracle for them and the result was, once again, that they had scraps that were filled, that filled seven ba baskets. Make, make no mistake, these seven baskets were not some small grocery bag, bags of the modern world. The word for basket here, the Greek word, is puris, which, you know, these were plaited reed baskets. They were used for commercial goods. To give you an example, um, each of these baskets, I'm told, could use, could weigh, could, could hold 70 kilos. Yeah, this was the same basket by which St. Paul was lowered from the walls of Damascus. So I presume St. Paul was more than 70 kilos. Yeah, I myself am 70 kilos. So I guess St. Paul was perhaps my, I don't know whether he was my weight or whatever, but a, a grown-up man would be minimum of 70 kilos. There were seven baskets, seven sevens are 49, 490 kilos of scraps. And that is how wonderful Jesus is when he works a miracle. Jesus is more than compassionate. He made sure they had, and we have enough. But he makes sure that we have enough for our needs, not for our greed. Today I want to wish um, my friend Fran in Australia, um, in Brisbane, a very, very happy birthday. Happy birthday, Fran. I hope you have a, a truly, truly blessed day. God bless you. And also to Clarinda. Um, I, Clarinda was a youth um, member in St. Michael's. 
and um, she and uh, also a great singer what a fantastic singer many of you might know her parents um, Ru uh, her mother Ruby Sarejo um, and uh, she was in the charismatic renewal she and her husband were the charismatic renewal for so many years ministering to people so Clarinda you and Satu and your little baby girl I want to wish you Clarinda a very happy birthday and may God continue to protect your family have a have a blessed day Clarinda and so let us all pray today together the Father the Son the Holy Spirit Amen thank you Lord for the gift of this day and for this teaching that you have given us this teaching of the multiplication where you take our, our littleness, our nothingness and you magnify it but you call us Lord to give I want to thank you for our lady who have supported your church who have supported ministry who have supported the missions who have given very often from the littleness that they have. Lord, I want to thank them for their love, their kindness. Your church depends, Lord, on the generosity of her people. And our people have always been kind. I ask you to touch the hearts of also those who are blessed with much, that they may not hold back, that they may give generously to those in need, to those around them. Teach us, Lord, sometimes just to fill up a grocery bag and take it to the home of someone who is in need. Thank you for this miracle, Lord, that you worked and for the many miracles in our own lives where when we've had nothing, we've turned to you and you blessed us. Thank you for providing for our need. Teach us to guard our greed. In your loving and your precious name, we make this prayer. Amen. The Lord be with you and may Almighty God bless you. The Father, Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Don't forget everybody to like this video, share it with your friends. I want to say a special thanks to all those of you who contribute to the Love, Joy, Hope Foundation for children and you share your, um, your kindness, especially on your birthdays, your wedding anniversaries, uh, the death anniversaries of your loved ones and you share a meal with the children of our home. Uh, if you want to know more about this home, if you want to reach out, uh, you can always uh, send me a message on 98202. 42151 and if you wish to support this ministry always send me a whatsapp message and i'll get back to you thank you god bless you have a blessed day don't forget to leave your comments also bye everybody